Hi, I'm in the old EEV blog lab. Please forgive the audio. Um, yes, it is completely empty. <laughs> this used to be the old lab, apart from an old maker bot and a couple of magazines. I was just clearing out the uh, cupboard here and I found the last ever edition of the world's longest running technical publication, or at least the world's longest running electronics magazine, Electronics Today. And it went under various names, which we'll go into, but this was the very last issue in December, January 2001. But technically it went a bit longer, but it changed its name to EAT. I'm not kidding, EA Today it was called EAT, and it was called EAT something and die by many of the industry. Anyway, I thought we'd have a look at this, not just this one, but the history of Electronics Australia magazine. Please forgive the crudity of this video. I do have an entire collection of Electronics Australia magazine uh, down in, dating back to the 1950s down in my bunker, but I just had some here I thought we'd take a look at. Now the editor at the time of this change was uh, Graham uh, Cattley and change, it's in our nature, blah, blah, blah. Um, EA is about to change. As you know, EA has always been, hasn't always been EA. We started off 79 years ago in 1922 as Wireless Weekly. Uh, so in 1939, they changed to radio, t uh, radio and Hobbies. And then in 1955, they changed again to uh, what's called RTV and H or Radio Television and Hobbies, which was a mouthful. And then in, 1965, no, yes, sorry, <laughs> 1955 they changed to RTV and H, 1965 they changed to Electronics Australia, which is the title it was under until, well, they renamed it EA like this. But anyway, he's hoping that we'd change. He's worried that uh, people wouldn't change. You can read it for yourself. And no, they didn't. People did not like the change. They hadn't, it, a lot of people will say EA died well before this, and we'll take a look at that. But this was the official end, December, January 2001. And basically everyone unsubscribed. There was a mass exodus. Their phone was ringing off the hook. Because you've got to remember, people still, a lot of people still didn't have email back then, so they were calling up, cancelling their subscriptions. And uh, EAT, or EA Today, lasted another six issues or something like that. I don't know, I had some somewhere. But, and then it just folded. So that was the end of the longest running technical publication, the longest running electronics magazine in the world. And as you can see, gear up your life. Like it said everything. People didn't even need to look at the next edition to know what it was going to be like. So let's actually just go back, shall we? And yeah, you could see it coming. Like it was <laughs> gadget mania. We'll take a look at this, but let's go back, shall we? I found some old ones here as well. Um, I think these are duplicates from my uh, set down here, but this was RTV and H, two and six, fantastic. And, you know, I d look, I won't go through, but like, <laughs> there's Neville Williams, there he is. Oh, legend. And, you know, and it was a great publication, RTV and H, there you go. Ah, oh, beautiful. And it was all, you know, it was still like radio and, you know, <laughs> there was still lots of, stuff like that, but fantastic. Classical reviews, so they reviewed like classical music and stuff like that. But, and then uh, it changed, this is an early edition, don't know if it's the first edition, anyway, early edition of Electronics Australia magazine, and check out the cover. Can you imagine <laughs> putting two women in the kitchen on the front cover <laughs> A technical magazine today. Oh, there'd be an SJW meltdown, a nuclear meltdown. It'd be <laughs> incredible. Anyway, so yes, Electronics Australia magazine with its, oh, look at those beautiful, any, oh, look, I can't, oh, the wiring diagrams, point to point wiring diagrams, fantastic. I could spend all day, but Electronics Australia magazine back in the day, <laughs> beautiful. There's, there's Jim Rowe, there's Jim Rowe playing an organ. Uh, Jim Rowe, of course, the editor for 30 years or something, a long, long time. And oh, look at the glamour. Look at the glamour. <laughs> 1977. Fantastic. But let's take a look at probably the heyday of Electronics Australia was like the mid-90s. What do we got here? Yep, mid-90s. So this is, wow, look at that. Another... 
<laughs> classic front cover. But this was when like 164 page digest issue, it was thick. Like I think it might have hit 200 pages at one stage. And I got mine, a lot of my projects published in the uh, 90s. There's Jim Ray, uh, Jim Bro, sorry, Jim. And they had tons of, you know, they had features, then lots of projects and technical stuff, professional electronics, columns and comments, um, and departments and all sorts of stuff. It was absolutely, that was probably the 90s, you know, early to mid 90s was, was probably the heyday of uh, a PC programmer for 68 7705 microcomputers. Fantastic. Who, who wrote that one? Sorry, I've got to look. <laughs> help myself. David Russell and Paul Williams. Hmm. Anyway, yeah, um, that was probably the heyday, like really thick. Like, you know, there was like every issue just seemed to get thicker and thicker at the time. Oh, no, sorry, that one's not. That includes the catalogue. Ah, oh, I thought that was a thick one. Anyway, some of them were ridiculously thick. That was the Outronics. There's Jack O'Donnell. There he is, still running it. Outronics, they still sell parts everything like that. Anyway, it was like really thick in the mid to late 90s, something like that. And let's go to the late 90s, shall we? January 99, oh, hang on, yep, January 1999. You can sort of probably start to see it. Like, you know, we've still got featuring uh, projects on the front cover and all that sort of stuff. There's, you know, still projects of the feature, world of electronics, columns and comments, departments, but it's a bit thinner than what it used to be. You know, we're talking like just under 100 pages, something like that. So, and then, yeah, like home theatre stuff. Like, this, that stuff's always kind of been there, but, you know, it just got a little bit more and more towards the end of, uh, you know, end of the millennium there. 99, there it is, sleepless in Seattle. <laughs> and yeah, gets it, no, we're back to projects. Yeah, it gets more gadgety. Yeah, big screen <laughs> projection TVs, fantastic. Back to, but you can see, mm, yeah, cool blue for you when blue LEDs were all the rage and everything was blue. Ugh. And then it sort of started to get a little bit, did they add? No. They, yeah, because it used to include, because then they like merged with ETI, they took over Electronics Today International. Um, and yeah, you can see it's getting a bit, bit more glam. Look at this, January 2000. So this was the start of the new millennium, right? So no, yeah, you can kind of see where this was going. So by then everyone went, yeah, EA just really wasn't, you know, it wasn't really the old EA. Graham Cattley had uh, started becoming the editor, but in Graham's defense, he did actually email me quite a few years ago because I was one of the ones, along with many others, uh, back before the EEV blog forum, there was the Oz Electronics Usenet group, and it was still going. And there was, you know, everyone was complaining about Electronics Australia back then. I was one of the uh, big, I think one my web uh, site actually had a page devoted to it and stuff like that. And uh, Graham actually emailed me, like probably, I don't know, five or eight years ago or something, and said, hey, you know, look, I'd really like to tell the story of what happened there. It wasn't my fault, really. And I, yeah, I suspect, but he never really um, followed up on that. So yeah, I don't think it was necessarily him, his fault. It was coming from the publishers, and then Jim Rowe stepped aside. Jim Rowe was still there. Jamison Rowe, there he is, but uh, yeah, he became a contributing editor. He could, old Jim could see the uh, writing on the wall and he just handed over to Graham. And then I think the, yeah, the publishing uh, pressure from the publishing house, they just wanted more numbers and they wanted to be like a glamour magazine. So we're at March 2000 and what have we got here? May, here we go. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> Boom, it's the, towards the end of EA, Electronics Australia, space, you know, interesting stuff like space, I don't mind, but yeah, like the Xbox and stuff like that, it's just, who's the Bose, oh god, groan, you know, size matters, <laughs> size matters, um, oh no, no, we're still running 100 pages, and they relegated the technical projects towards the end, um, and no, hang on, index, September 2, what? What's going on there? Reviews, features, and like, anyway, they sort of relegated the technical stuff towards the back of the magazine back then. Um, and so the first, 
well, you know, uh, oh, Tom Moffat, sadly not with us anymore. And uh, Moffat's Madhouse, great column. Anyway, yeah, they just started to push stuff back and back and you could see it going and it's just like, yeah. <laughs> it was Gonski until we ended up with, uh, basically at the end of 2000, only took a, a pretty much a year for it to go downhill and then they announced the uh, change. So that's, no, that's April 2000 and this is December 2000 and yep, we're about to change coming up. And then that was the end of that. That's all she wrote. And that was the sad end to Electronics, the venerable Electronics Australia magazine. So it lasted until 2000, but probably, yeah, the 90s, late 80s, probably the late 80s, were, but it was still going strong mid to late 90s. Um, it was still going fantastic. But there you have it, um, the <laughs> Electronics Australia magazine. It's sad. Longest running publication in the world from uh, Wireless Weekly through to uh, Radio and Hobbies and then Radio TV and Hobbies and then Electronics Australia for like 35 years or something. And then it was all over. Ah, oh, well, nothing lasts forever. So I hope you enjoyed that look back through Electronics Australia magazine. And where's the, yeah, where's the set? Oh, I don't know. Bleh. It's Gonski. Electronics Australia magazine. Yeah, let us know uh, your memories of uh, EA in the or earlier um, in the comments down below. I, I don't think there was much overseas readership. Like it would have been very small. It was predominantly here in Australia. I think at the peak, it was like I think uh, Leo. I think uh, Leo Simpson, editor of uh, Silicon Chip magazine, uh, told me that the public, like I think it was around fifty. 80,000 or something, you know, it was it was quite large at its peak uh, circulation. That was, uh, I think, almost exclusively Australia, really. I'm not sure if they uh, really exported it much. Let us know in the comments down below if you actually um, got this, you were overseas and you read Electronics Australia magazine. Was it in your local news agent, as we call them here? As I learned, there's no such thing as really as a news agent as we know them in Australia, in the US and other uh, places or the other countries, but in the US there's not apparently, so yeah, let us know. But <laughs> yeah. can you imagine like <laughs> some of these front covers, like if Silicon Chip did a front cover like these these days, uh, the outrage would be <laughs> enormous. Anyway, hope you liked the video. Catch you next time.